Good morning. Welcome. It's so good to have you all here today. So many of you, because we, we've we um, some people have been away for various reasons, work or sick or other things going on in life. But it's so good to see so many of you here this morning. Welcome. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Oh, you can do better than that. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Praise God. We're going to hand over to uh, Stuart and Hannah Turnbull, the cadets at the training college, and we really look forward to their ministry today, and I think we should encourage them. Good morning. Thank you for that lovely welcome. It's really good to be back. This is our third visit to you now at Catford, and we're really pleased to be here, and we're so glad to see so many smiling faces looking back at us this morning. We are going to, uh, to open our time of worship reading from the Psalms. We're going to take some encouragement this morning from the Psalm writer. If you have a Bible or you'd like one, there are some at the back if you want to follow through. Otherwise, the words do appear on the screen. It's Psalm number 33, and it's the first five verses. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. We've got a four-stringed ukulele going on over here, so we're nearly there. (laughs) Well done. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. Hallelujah. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. And the earth is full of his unfailing love. What words of praise and encouragement to start our morning worship together. We're going to sing of the great love of God uh, in in our opening song. If you have a songbook and you'd like to use that, it's song number eight. All the words will appear on the screen. Let us unite to sing, to sing joyfully to the Lord, as the psalmist says, that God is love. Let's praise him with our voices If you have instruments near you, you'd like to praise him with two, that would be amazing. And we uh, we just uh, follow our wonderful um, accompanists up here and we'll (laughs) sing along together. Wonderful. You are wonderfully made. Praise God. If I'd invite you to stand if you're able and let's join in singing praises to God this morning. Thank you.
such a good sing this morning. Please do take your seats. God is love. Isn't that amazing? I really hope you know that to be true for yourselves this morning. We're going to um, transition into a more quiet time just now. We're going to bring um, ourselves and, and, and everybody here in a time of prayer as we uh, just take some time to talk to God this morning. Before we do that, I'd like us to sing together song number 353, if you're using the songbook. Um, this song just invites us to be still. It invites us to have that time to meet with God in the quietness. And that's something we're going to be considering, the, the, the contrast between the noise of life and the quietness that we can find in God's presence this morning. We've done the noisy praise. It's, isn't that amazing? There is a place for noisy praise, and we'll be thinking about that later as well. But there's also a time for stillness. And I hope that this song will help us come into a, a, a time of stillness as we're able to pray together. Song number 353, if you're using the songbook. Be still, for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. He's in this place, and he's ready to listen to the prayers of our hearts. Let's join and sing together. to invite you just for a few moments in the stillness of this place to just pray for yourself, to just draw close to God and ask him to be close to you right now.
And as we continue in prayer, I'd invite you to just look around the room. And I'd invite you to just picture somebody in this room and bring them before God this morning. You might know them. You might not. But God knows who they are. Picture somebody in this place and just bring them before God just now. I'd like us to think a bit further afield just now, outside of this hall, outside of Catford, outside of the UK even. We live in a, a, a wonderful world, but our world is hurting. So I just ask, is there anybody that would like to share prayer openly with us this morning for our world, for healing in our world, for peace in our world?
Heavenly Father, we lift these prayers up to you. We know you hear the words we speak, the words we say in our minds and our hearts. Even the things we, we're not even sure how to say them, you know, Lord. And we thank you for that. We pray your blessing over today. And for our congregation here. Help us to hear from your word. Help us to live your word in all we do. Amen. And amen. Thank you for your prayers this morning. Thank you for, for sharing in that time together. We're going to do something a little bit different now. This is the bit my kids are looking forward to. <laughs> I'd like to do a little experiment with you all this morning to test our hearing. Oh, we're not sure what she's going to do. Well, I'll tell you what I want you to do, and then uh, we'll see if we've got any volunteers. So what I would like is for us to make a very, very, very big noise. Lots of noise. Okay? doesn't matter what you do. Although there are lots of instruments, we've already seen those. But then you've also got your voices. You might want to clap. You might want to be quite distracting. I don't know. Because that's like visual noise, isn't it? And I'm going to try and convey a message to somebody in the room to see if they can hear me amongst all the noise. Would anybody like to be that person who's going to try and understand me? Or will I pick on somebody? Oh, we're all a bit shy this morning. We might have to pick on somebody. Okay, let's pick on, let's go for somebody near the back. Let's, let's go for, everyone's going to pick me. We're doing this, they're avoiding eye contact. Please don't pick me. Okay, let's, um, let's, let's, let's go all the way over here. <laughs> Would you help me this morning? Is that okay? You can say where you are. That's absolutely fine. All you've got to do is try and hear what I'm saying. Okay? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Willing volunteer. Right. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to count down from three. Should I... Does anyone want an instrument? You can make noise without an instrument. That's fine. There is a big box at the back. If you'd like to go and help yourselves, you are welcome to do so. I'm going to count down from three. Evelyn, are you ready? You're going to help me make some noise. Yeah? What have you got to make the noise? Oh, she's got a ukulele. That's good. Okay. I'm going to count down from three, and I want you to start making some noise. Okay? And then I'll... We, we, yeah? You with me? You with me? Yeah? We're going to try and communicate a message and see if you can hear me or not. Are you ready? Three, two, one... Go! <laughs> three again. Absolute silence. And let's see if it's easier to understand the message. Hopefully. Otherwise this falls apart. Okay. You ready? Three, two, one. How are you today? Well done. Are you well? Wonderful. 
a bit stressed. <laughs> I've been put on the spot in the meeting. I didn't want to, but yeah. You could hear me. Yes. Why could you hear me? Because it was silent. There wasn't the distraction there. Mm, that's interesting. Okay. Well, we are going to listen to, um, to our scriptures this morning. Stuart's going to read us a story from the Old Testament. We're going to think about the prophet Elijah this morning. And he wanted to hear something, or God had something to say to Elijah. We're gonna, I just want you to see if you can find the parallel between that illustration of the noise, hearing a message in the noise, and hearing a message in the stillness, and see if you can see how that relates to Elijah's story this morning. Thank you, Hannah. Our Bible reading is taken from 1 Kings and chapter 19, and starting at verse 1, 1 Kings chapter 19, Starting at verse 1, if you are following, it is on the screen. If you've got a Bible, one of the core Bibles, it's page 360 to help you get there quicker. If you've got an app, I have no idea where it is in your app, but I'm sure you can get there as well. And it's entitled, In uh, Elijah Flees to Horeb. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread, baked over hot coals, and a jar of water, He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he travelled for forty days and forty nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazel king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu son of Nimishi king over Israel. And anoint Elisha son of Shaphat from Abel Meholah to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Hazel. And Elisha will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve... 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal and whose mouths have not kissed him. May God add his blessing to that reading this morning.
You're like, maybe, is it the rain? I was like, what is that? Maybe we should sing, the rain came down and the floods went whoosh, but that's a different Bible story. Maybe another day. Maybe another time. We are, we're going to join in singing again uh, about how amazing our God is, because I think that's really important to do. But particularly uh, in this next song, the words to verse 2, um, re- I think, really link to, to what we've just heard from the scriptures. It's song 662, if you're using the songbook. And the second verse is that when darkness seems to veil his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. We've heard about how Elijah um, was struggling. He, was, he found life to be a bit tough, but he was able to find rest in God's presence. We're going to uh, stand if you're able to, and this will also be an opportunity for you to give in your offering if you would like to do so. Um, we're going to stand and, stand and sing this song straight through. Thank you very much. Father God, we just come before you. We want to give you thanks for the gifts that you give us on a daily basis. And we give back to you a small portion of those gifts and ask that you will use them for um, the growing and expanding of your kingdom in Catford. And we pray that many people will know your name because of the gifts that are given today. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. How are you at finding time to rest? Are you good? Rubbish? Do you rush about from one thing to another, not being able to find much time? Or are you good at finding time to rest? Are you good at blocking out time to go, do you know what? I just need to sit back, enjoy the weather. Anyone enjoyed the uh, one day of summer we've had so far this year? On, uh, was it Tuesday? I forgot we've got rain today, so that's us done for, isn't it? I know that I'm not that good at finding time to rest. That is perhaps partly due to having these two, essentially, Eli and Evelyn. They are very energetic at times. But also at times I'm uh, not overly the best at managing my own time. And uh, I get myself a little bit stressed, especially when essays have to be in and... You work to the wire. I'm sure you've perhaps at times had to work to the wire at times. Now, there is a new TV show on uh, CBeebies. Now, I don't expect you to have watched CBeebies, but this is a family. Um, I forget what their surname is actually called, but it's, the TV programme is entitled Bluey. Now, if you're from Australia, you may find uh, great uh, comfort in their accent, you may not. 
And, but this is a family which has certainly endeared themselves to our family purely because it's one of those TV shows I actually like to watch. And it is essentially Bluey, who is the uh, little blue dog, um, and her family, and they often go on adventures or they play around the house, and they often leave their parents with such exhaustion and uh, they just want to find time to rest. And perhaps if you've had kids or have looked after kids, you find that time where you just go, I love my kids, but I just want that time to rest. I don't know if that's a familiar thing for you. And so we certainly love it as a family, although Hannah and I are slightly jealous of the enthusiasm which the parents put into all of the games which they do play. But we're just going to watch a little clip of a episode just now to give you a flavour. Thank you. <laughs> Have you been in that situation yourself, perhaps? Loads of different things going on. You can see perhaps you're cooking some veg and the pot's boiling over, but you need to do something over here. Or in the case of Bluey, you know, one needed the toilet, but the other's messed with the tap, and it's flowing everywhere and causing chaos. And then you sort it all out, and then you just want to go, ah. We've been there at times, haven't we? In our scripture reading for today, we find Elijah stopping for rest. And not because he's been chased by two young children or even having to look after two young children. He is looking for rest as he finds himself on the run from Jezebel. He is on the run following meeting with Jezebel's prophets, which ended in their demise. If you want to look back, go to chapter 18. We hear all about it. It's a fantastic story. But essentially, Jezebel wasn't happy that essentially Elijah had uh, put to death all of his prophets and he wanted revenge. Elijah feared for his life. And so in this moment, it was certainly a fight or flight kind of moment which took place in Elijah's mind and he went with that flight option. And he goes so far with his servant before leaving them to travel um, for his next section on his own. Now, I don't know how you are with keeping your own company, but can you imagine, for a second, travelling a day's journey, not in a car, not on the bus, even though it felt like that just getting from William Booth College down here this morning, but just imagine walking a day's journey by yourself. Are you good with your own thoughts which are going on in your mind? But add to that the fact that he was fearing for his life as well. So he was walking that journey in his own mind, fearing his, for his life. It's perhaps not a good place to be in, is it? We perhaps can think of situations where that's certainly applicable at the moment. And this was a journey not done in the car or bike, it was on foot. And I think it is understandable that by the time that Elijah does stop... He just doesn't want to be here anymore. He goes to that bush. He's not in a good place. And he just stops to take rest underneath that bush and where he prays to God. And his prayer is not one of praise and adoration, but one of a man who has nothing else to give, who has given it all to that point, and a man who is at the end of his tether. It's in the following moments where we meet with with a God who cares deeply for Elijah's needs and even for our own. For Elijah is able to rest and is able to sleep. And whilst asleep, an angel of the Lord attends and provides Elijah with food and drink, providing and preparing for the journey ahead. But this doesn't happen just the once if we look in a scripture. It happens twice. God recognises the journey ahead for Elijah and what that it will entail and looks to provide and strengthen Elijah so that he can make that journey. Can you imagine it? Can you place yourself into the shoes of Elijah 
or perhaps the sandals that he may have been wearing or nothing don't know they didn't have clarks back in the uh, 2000 something bc they may have had something else but it was a journey perhaps of up to 30 miles concerned about your own welfare and at the moment you can't go any further at the moment that you need to stop are you able to seek god and rest the likelihood is that we go through life not about to set out onto a journey walking by ourselves but we journey life in general we have the ups and the downs the good times and the bad when things are going well we might say that yes it is easy for us to find rest in god but what about those difficult times what about those times when we are perhaps struggling the most is it easy to find rest in god to help with this we may uh, be able to consider the words we find in matthew's gospel in Matthew 11, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He then goes on to speak about sharing his yoke, which is an easy yoke to share. And the burden of Christ is light. Jesus is providing this image once more of being able to go to him and to find rest. It was important for Elijah to go and find rest in God. And Jesus is holding that same invitation to us to go and share in his yoke. This invitation to be able to share our concerns, to share our burdens of life perhaps, but then to rest in the presence of God through Christ. We have perhaps all been on a journey somewhere. You may have noticed by my accent, I'm not a local lad. I'm not from just up over the other side of the river. I am from the northeast of England. Getting up to my parents is not a quick journey. Fortunately, we don't have to walk with these two to the northeast of England. I don't think I would corp if I had to walk with them to the northeast. But even in the car journey, even in any journey we go on, we don't just go in one stop, do we? We take time to rest. On the motorway, they have service stations. Every so often, they have signs which come up and say, are you tired? The next service station is in so many miles. The opportunity for us to take time to rest, to recuperate, to rebuild what we need so that we can continue on that journey ahead. Why do we do that? So we can arrive at the destination we want to safely. So we can get to that final point and be restful. The same is said in life. We are on a journey in life, one which is more than a day's travel. We need to be comfortable in taking regular rest and seeking that rest in God so that we can recharge for the next stage of this journey ahead. But whilst also on that journey, being aware that though this time we may also be able to share the burden of life with Christ, we are not travelling alone. There is someone who is willing to travel this journey with us, to share the burden with us. We can take those moments of rest. We can evaluate and leave the things which perhaps are even too much of a burden. We don't have to take them the whole journey with us. We can leave them. But our story with Elijah doesn't finish with him just taking rest and sustenance. He had those so that he could continue his journey up to the Mount of Horeb. Or you may know it in other parts of Scripture as Mount Sinai, the same mountain where God goes and he meets with Moses way back in Exodus. The same mountain where God provides the commandments. That one. And whilst Elijah is here, 
God speaks with him, questioning him why he is there. And following his response, God says to Elijah, come out of the cave that he's found himself in so that the Lord can pass by. What we read from the text is that there was a big wind, there was a fire, there was noise. There was a lot of it. Hard to hear in such things. And yet Elijah recognised that in these large noisy events and possible signs that God was not showing himself through these particular things, but it was in the stillness, it was in the quietness, it was in the whisper, that whisper where God was. Elijah recognised that God was there in the stillness and in that moment he covers his face to go and meet with God. Again, we can go back to Moses. When he, when he meets with God on the mountain, what does he do? He covers his face so that he can go and be in the presence of God. This silence and quietness indicated to Elijah that he was in a holy place at that moment. In the hustle and bustle of life, in the busyness, in all the noise and commotion... Do you recognise those moments of quietness and stillness? It's perhaps hard at times to hear and listen out for the quietness and stillness. We live under a um, aeroplane pathway thing and you can hear aeroplanes coming over all the time. It's hard to get that stillness. And even if we were to stop now, we'd be able to hear the birds there we go. We heard the rain earlier, didn't we, as it hit the side of the building. But are you able to recognise those moments of quietness and stillness? Are you able to recognise when you are in a holy place with God? For it's not always the moments of loud brashing, moments in which God will speak to us. And of course he can speak to us in those loud moments. But it's in the quietness we need to be prepared to listen out for, for and to seek God. We continue in scripture and read again that God asks Elijah why he is where he is. And Elijah responds once more in the same way as before. Almost sandwiching in the scripture the moment and emphasising that the Lord has passed by. He responds in exactly the same way as before. But in these moments we find the renewal of Elijah and he finishes with him being sent on to do a new task. But he isn't being sent back to where he had just come from. He's been sent to go further and to anoint a king, a new king, a dangerous task in itself. Yet these final words also speak a challenge to Elijah. When he spoke with God he felt alone and that he felt that he was the only one remaining who had still had faith and believed. You may find yourself in a similar position where you have been working hard to achieve something. You have worked hard to do what you have needed and that you felt that you're the only one pulling your weight. Have you been there? It could be quite a lonely place, still a lonely place. To find yourself, and this is where Elijah had been. But God speaks and reminds Elijah that he is not alone, and that there are 7,000 people who had not turned their back on God. Isn't that amazing? He wasn't alone on that mountainside. There were 7,000 other people he was going back to. It wasn't all doom and gloom, there was light, and Elijah certainly was not alone. And you may feel that like that in this moment, that in the hustle and bustle of life, in the business where you are giving all that there is of yourself and find that you are feeling alone, but be comforted that you are not. All you have to do is turn around right now and see that you're not alone in this place. We are certainly not alone. And we may need reminding that we can share that load 
once more and reassess where we are in doing so, we can look around us to see others. Finding rest for today, sharing your burdens for today and listening to God today is not the end of the journey. Like Elijah, as we return to where we may have come from this morning, from where we might need to take his word into the week ahead. Obviously, we need to take the word into the week ahead. In the week, as you find those times of difficulty, perhaps, or times of stress as we go into our daily lives, when you feel that you are doing it all alone in those times that you are struggling, are you able to share those burdens with Christ? Are you able to take that time in the presence of God? Are you able to share the load and be attended to? This morning, I would like to encourage you to find rest in the presence of God, to find rest in Christ and to be able to share your burdens with him, to seek him and allow him to attend to you. And it could be that today you take those steps and allow Christ to do this for the first time, for the second time, for whatever amount of time it may be. We all need to take that time and allow him to take care of you. It could be that today you are searching for God or trying to listen out for some direction in life. Perhaps trying to discern the voice of God through the noise of life. As we spend these moments now, or even in the days ahead, I encourage you to listen through the noise of life. To listen out for those quiet moments where God could be speaking to you. And listen to the direction that he may be pointing you towards just now. We thank God for the message that he brings to us through his word every day, don't we? And we uh, just thank him for the message he's given us today. That he's asking us to, to find rest in his presence. For our souls to find rest. To be still. Take the stillness. We don't always have to be busy. And I struggle with that myself. I feel like if I'm not being busy, then I'm not being productive. But I know that that is not always the case. And being still with God is just as important as doing work for God in the busyness. We're going to take some time to really reflect on that. I'd last, like to ask you in the next few moments to, um, to take the stillness that's being offered to you this morning. A song will be played on the screen, a little um, video with the words will come up. Um, a song that is all about stillness asking us to find rest in Christ. And I just ask that in this time you use the opportunity to pray, use the opportunity to reflect on what's God saying to you today. How can you respond to him? You might want to respond just where you are. You might like somebody to come and pray with you. If that's the case, I just ask that um, we be sensitive to that and that you, you make that known to somebody you feel comfortable praying with. You might want to use the place of prayer at the front to meet with God, if that's helpful to you. So let's just listen to this music and let's be still and let's feel God's presence moving in this place just now. Thank you.
God, we thank you for this time, this stillness, this place where we can be free to be your people. We pray that you will truly bring rest to our souls, Lord. Help us to seek you out in the silence. Help us to grow in the knowledge of you. Help us to build each other up as your disciples. Help us to encourage one another. We pray your continued strength as we, um, as we move from this place today, wherever we're going to next, and in the weeks, days and weeks to come. Be with us, Lord. Support us. Guide us. Continue to show your love. Help us to show your love. 
We pray all this in your precious name. Amen. I'm not going to listen to any announcements that you've got for the core this week. Thank you. Thank you. Um, wonderful to see you all today. So, um, the hall is nice and full today. Uh, firstly, thank you to the cadets, Hannah and Stuart, for leading our meeting and the children. So we thank you for leading our meeting today. And also a special welcome to Majors Lily and Stuart Oliver for joining us as well today. Really good to see you, Erwin and Esther. I think I haven't seen you for a while. And good to be back because I haven't been to the core for a while. And thank you for all your messages for, um, in relation to my auntie passing recently. Uh, quite a few announcements today. Um, on Sunday, the 27th of March, which is Mother's Day, just to remind one or two people, uh, Lynn, I can never pronounce her name, is it Keshuti or Seshuti from the THQ, will be leading us for the natural church development. Um, so the hall will look slightly different, so, but do not be alarmed, but it's for us to facilitate that activity on that day. Um, just please remember Ivo, who's not with us today, he was taken into hospital on Friday, but we hear he's okay at the moment, but just do remember him in your prayers. Uh, Karen Romick, just sitting over there, uh, collecting goods for Ukraine. So if you would like to contribute anything, uh, please see them later today. On the 24th, 25th, and 26th, there's a play, Lewis and Cor, um, that will be celebrating the early days of the Salvation Army. So if you're able to make it for those days, please, uh, I'll remind you nearer the time. So there will be a play by James Hay. Um, at Lewisham Call. And there's a few birthdays. Just to remind you, on the 16th, uh, it will be Monica's birthday. She's not with us today, but it was Comfort's birthday this week, so we will sing. Um, so. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Comfort. Happy birthday to you. Hip hip. Hip hip. And may the Lord continue to keep you. Um, there are some free vegetables at the back of the hall. I can't actually see them. Where are they? Ah, okay. So if you'd like to pick up some vegetables, there's some free vegetables at the back. Um, please do join us for tea and coffee after the meeting, but I have a special thing to do today. I've got some awards to present. I've arranged a paparazzi to take some pictures. <laughs> so the first award is going to the core. I'll be asking Major Rebecca to come and pick up this award. This is to do with the tea party we had last week, isn't it? Yes. It was, isn't it? So thank you for hosting that. It went very well. Congratulations. That's, this is for all of us. Yes. Thank you, Amanda. The other one is for Sharon. She's not here today. We would like to collect it on behalf of Sharon and then we'll give it to her later. Yes. Shall I give that to you as well? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Last but not least, Superstar Award. And this goes to Major Michael Eden. <laughs> for hosting her. Thank you. <laughs> Shall we have a final round of applause for those awards? That's all the announcements. Thank you. Wow, what a lot to celebrate. I'm so pleased we've been able to, to join with a birth and this cake. That's very exciting. Love a bit of cake. Happy birthday. And uh, whoever else's birthday it was that I um, missed that one, but yes, sending our congratulations. Thank you. We're going to, um, to close our meeting in, in song of praise again. This morning we started talking about the love of God, God's love, uh, God is love, and we're going to close in the same vein that thinking about how wonderful God's love is. God's love to me is wonderful.
I believe that. I hope you do too. If you're using the songbook, it's number 25. Number 25, God's love to me is wonderful. And verse 2 reminds us again of how when Elijah was really scared, uh, that God banishes that fear. In freedom, we can rejoice because God loves us. So let's um, join together. Let's praise our Lord. You can shake your maracas. That's okay. Let's join in praise together. Would you stand and, and join us as we sing? Thank you. And a benediction to close today. God be with you till we meet again. Neath his wings protecting hide you. Daily manna still provide you. God be with you until we meet again. Amen.